la marée se précipite, plante son baiser sur la rive, puis roule vers la mer, et la mer est très encore une fois de plus. This is a story about Harry Ducharme, a man that does not exist. This is his father, who died when he was 38. And this is his mother, who died when she was 39. This is me. I introduced them to each other. And any writer who has ever gone on tour will understand what is happening in this picture. This is the man who is Harry's, I don't know, midwife? What's another word for publisher? These are some of Harry's adoptive parents. These good people, and many more like them, are a writer's best friend. All of us are part of Harry's story, and now so are you. I said that Harry does not really exist, and that's true, but here's the more important truth, a truth that every writer and every good reader knows. Harry Ducharme is as real as you or me, and each of us is a character in our own fiction, in a book we write about ourselves. Knee deep in the Atlantic, squinting east toward a red dot on the horizon, Harry Ducharme was trying to remember the first line of a story. As his mind cleared, he slowly remembered driving past a high-walled fort, across a bridge guarded by lions, past a lighthouse, past a liquor store, parking his Buick, well, that was still a bit fuzzy where he parked it. But here I am at last in the goddamn ocean, he mumbled to himself, pulling fiction out of my ass. Harry studied the sky this morning, red-orange across the horizon at dawn, and then, with the sun up, a cloudless blue sky sat on top of the gray, wavy ocean. He studied that sky, memorizing the color of air and smell of water, the grit of sand, the warmth of his new world. He remembered a moment from his past, one that had always come back to him at such points in his life. In an album somewhere was a picture of him and his two-year-old son on a beach. His wife had taken it as they were walking away from her. Harry was holding his son's hand and looking down at him. The sky was a postcard blue. And then it hit him this morning. It was this beach. I was a good father in the beginning, and then it all went away. But he shook his head and blinked. Maybe not, maybe it never happened. He stood up, brushed off the seat of his pants, and went looking for his Buick. It was all he wanted from his old world. This is the story of Harry Ducharme, a good man, even if he never quite believed it himself. His story ends in the ocean on Election Day 2008, but it began in Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1968. I love the movies, and this was my favorite job of all time, managing a giant drive-in theater in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And one night, as a lightning storm raged all over the place, I stood in a phone booth at the corner of the concession stand and told myself, this would make a great story. I would write about the movies, about me and God. Trouble was, I wasn't a writer. All talk, no walk. I still had to live a lot longer, experience more of the conflict between life and death, and yes, I know how this sounds, all overwritten, this life and death stuff. But really? Love, sex, death, God, food, talk, movies, the beach, every moment of your life, all part of one big story, right? We all tell stories. We all create our own fiction, and some of us write it down. Fact into fiction is tricky. Consider this description of a mythical college town in Iowa. The Athens of the Midwest. Like all college towns, an island of art and intellect and tax-supported affluence, a world safe from the crime and poverty, 
and shameless hucksterism of the rest of America. Or so we tell ourselves, we're different, we're better, we live the life of the mind. A world of perpetual adolescence. A world in which half the population is engaged in preparing the other half for their future. Give us your young, we tell those nervous and loving mothers and fathers who want their children's lives to be happier and more comfortable than their own. Give us your sons and daughters, their hopes and fears, their insecurities, and their student loans. Wrap them in an ACT or SAT score and pack them off to Athens. Athens never existed, but Iowa City does, one of the great college towns in America, but different. Iowa City is the home of the Iowa Writers' Workshop and the International Writing Program. Iowa City is the only American city designated by UNESCO as a city of literature. Not New York, not Los Angeles, not Chicago, no. Just Iowa City. River City, folks. Grant Wood Country, Meredith Wilson Country, 76 friggin' trombones, and in heaven there is no beer, and the most outstanding citizen of Iowa City for 2002, chosen by popular acclamation, the people's choice in this writer's haven was, of course, a good man and great football coach named Kirk Ferentz. There is no contradiction here, only irony. Remember how we listened to the radio And I said, that's the place to be And how I got the job as an FM job The day you married me It was two kids and I was into AM rock But I just had to run around It's been eight years since I left you, babe Let me tell you about what's gone down 